Today we are talking about circles. So you go. Believe me. So if I have a, a basic equation, x squared plus y squared equals one. Uh, Okay, if I plugged in zero for x, shh, if I plugged in zero for x, what would y have to be? One. One or negative one, right? So if x is zero, y is one or negative one. So zero, one, oh, let me put one way up here. Zero, negative one. Wait, did we do the plus minus thing? Yeah, because negative one squared is also one, right? Yeah, when you when you square root both sides, yeah, it's plus or minus. Uh, if if we make y value zero, what would the x value have to be? If this is zero. Plus or minus one, right? So the x values one or one and negative one. Okay, what shape does it make? And find all those points in here. Like all these would be like square root answers. They're kind of messy. Um, anyway. It makes a circle. So this circle is has a center at zero, zero, and a radius of what? One. One. Okay, now. Let's just jump right in here to this. Uh, okay. Uh, any guesses? So instead of just x squared, it's x minus 1 squared. Any guesses what this minus 1 is going to do to the graph of the circle? No. No. Remember this stuff we knew once upon a time? Yeah, it makes it move right one. So if it's on the x, it affects the x value, the left to right value. But it does the opposite of what you might guess. It moves instead of the left one, it moves right one. Um, what do you think this plus two on the y is going to do? No, it's on the y value. The y's go up and down. So it's going to do the opposite. The, the, it's different than this because over here the plus one is not directly on the y. <laughs> if this plus one, if you subtracted one, it'd be a minus one on this side. But anyway, if it's right next to it, it just does the opposite, basically. So the plus two makes it go down to. So that's kind of the opposite. That's all you have to remember. And what does this 9 do? Well, the number over here is the radius squared. Radius squared is 9. So if the radius squared is 9, what's the radius? 3. Well, would it be plus or minus 3? Kind of, but does negative 3 make sense for radius? No. So anyway. If the graph moves right one and down two, that would give you like the center of one negative two. And if the radius is three, you can kind of just go three in every direction. Like left, right, up, down. And then use that to help you draw the circle. Okie dokie. Dookie. Uh, let's do one more and then we'll jump in. Are we going to use graph paper at all? Some of it, yeah. No. Whoops. All right. What does this plus three do to the graph? Left three. 
up to what's the radius? Square root of seven, which is like three times three is nine, right? So that's less than three. It'd be like two point seven or something. Um, Anyways, it's kind of a weird one. Let's try number one. Number one's kind of it's kind of backwards of what I was just doing. Uh, they're giving us the information we're supposed to write the equation. So the center is at zero zero, and the radius is twenty five. So how do I write the equation if the center's at zero zero? What do I put for the x and y stuff? Well, remember, my first one was at zero, zero. If you put like x minus zero squared plus y minus zero squared, that would be true. But what is x minus zero squared? Just x squared plus y squared. Okay, it's kind of a trick question right off the bat from number one. It says the radius is 25. So what am I going to put right here? 25 squared. Now it's square root of 25. It's a big number. So it's 625. You guys didn't fall for it. Way to go. Yeah, you need to square the radius. Anyway, that's number one. Okay, number three. The center is at negative two, zero. So basically, the graph has moved left two. How do I move my graph left two? Plus two, correct. What about the y? Not moved up or down, so we just leave a y squared equals the radius is 10. So, what am I going to put for this? <coughs> this is the radius squared, goes right here. So, 10 squared is. Wait, what? 2 is 10. It's 10. Oh, that was number 2. Okay, 0.4 squared is what? 16. 0.16. 0.4 times 0.4 is 16, but you move the decimal once for each decimal place. 0.16. Uh, number five. Okay, the center is at 3, negative 1. So it's right 3, down 1. How do I move the graph right? Three. How do I move the graph down one? I think somebody y whispered it. Y plus one. It does the opposite. And then the radius is two squared of three. So thirty-six. Okay. If you plug this in the calculator, it would be wrong. Does anybody know why? A couple people did this in the other class. Because of square the square root of three and not multiplication. Right. Exponents come before multiplication. So it would do this first and not that. So it's really that's what we want to do, square all of that. So what's two squared? Four. Square root of three squared? Three. Four times three? Number seven, write the equation of the graphed circle. How about you try that? And by the time I get back, we'll see if we got it right. Yosh, I need to go to the store. Garsh. Oh, no, we have graph paper. Speaking of Halloween.
So number seven, the graph, the center of the graph has moved up five. So how do we move the graph up five? Y minus five squared equals zero. Okay, what is the radius of the circle on number seven? Two. two. Goes from the center to the edge is two units. So you put two squared here, which is four. Yay. Okay, so a number nine, the center is, let's see, negative four, negative one. So how do we make it move left four? Plus four. How do we make the graph move down one? Plus one. What is the radius? My eyes are every time I'm doing these things. Three. If the radius is three, what am I going to put here? <coughs> Nine. Oh, very dumb. Number eleven. Sketch. Yeah, let's graph it. Oh, I think my. Sketch graph. Okay, if there's a plus two on the x, where's the center of the graph going to be? Left two, because it's on the x. So the center is at negative two, zero, so I'm going to put it up there. And then it says equals nine. There's a 9 out there, what's the radius must be? What must the radius be? It's kind of the opposite of number 9, we just did it. What was the radius on number 9? 3. 3. The radius, or if that number is 9 out there, the radius must be square root of 9, 3. So from the center, I'm going to go 3 in every direction. 3 up, 3 down, 3 left, 3 right. And use that to draw a circle. You might, with your pencil, like do a secret to making it prettier. Do a really light pencil mark. And then uh, if it doesn't go very well, you can kind of just... Can we just like draw a you can do object? You can do better on the second round. I kind of really like this. Later I'm going to go around and see who has the worst circles and call them out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> that's gonna be so fun, bro. I wanna do. I wanna work on that. Mine's a box. Dude, mine's like, mine's like a handy man. Look at this, bro. It's, it's like a circle. It's, it's a box with a circular edge. Who has the squariest circles? That's my question. Yes, Boris. <laughs> Let's go. You came out. Oh. Wait. <laughs> straight. As straight. As straight. As straight. I don't want to be offensive. I only want to be religiously positive. You are offensive. Okay. Number 13. Um, where's the center going to be at? Circles. <laughs> what is the square 
I retraced the circle. Right. What happened? <laughs> I went to the wrong point. He, he like bumped his head. Yeah, he didn't show you. I went to the wrong point, so I just left it there. <laughs> All right, on 13, where's the center of the circle? Zero, zero, it's not shifted. Okay, what is the radius going to be? Five. I don't know, just Or sorry, the radius is, oh no, radius squared is 49 ninths. So the radius must be seven, three. Right. Square root. What times what equals forty nine over nine? Seven over three. Which turns into what as a mixed number since we have to graph this? Two and a half. Two and one third keeps the denominator. <coughs> so I'm gonna go up two and one third, about right there, and right two and one third. Shannon, with all your criticism, my circles. Are you serious, think, Shannon? You got a lot to live up to. Just, yeah, that's Sharon. Cool. Just in, Girl, in, I'm not. In, in, you can't in, draw a circle like a shape that clock. You are nothing, Shannon. You are less. I than think I'm going to put a lot of red ink on Shannon's paper. Me. Yeah. Tell her how I feel about the circles. Uh, uh, that's, that's what you mean. No. Not the Shannon. I must say. I would never do such a thing to Shannon, only the worst, because he's my people. Wait, wait. Hey, 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 uh, that was it. Ten through fourteen, five. Okay, number fifteen. Once engineers determine the ideal position for a new cellular phone tower, a circular search area at the location is usually given to a real estate agent. This radius of target area search search area is typically one fourth the radius of the planned coverage area. A new tower with a coverage radius of four miles would ideally be located at 4-2 on the map grid where each unit represents 0.1 miles. A lot of info in that. Probably have to read it a few times to di digest it. Uh, basically it says that uh, a cell phone tower has coverage for like a circular area and they have to send out a real estate guy to check one-fourth of the area. Probably you can't have houses too close to it or something will interfere with the signal or something. I don't know what the deal is, but. Um, <clears throat> so question number one, what is the radius of the real estate guy's search area? So it said that the tower is supposed to reach four miles. So if he only has to search, the radius is four miles. So if he only has to search one fourth of that, what's, yeah, one fourth of four is one. One, one fourth. I can imagine. Would it be answer that on the graph too? No, it's not a graph. 15 is not in the graphing section. Okay, what is the equation of the circle that defines the search area? Okay, one of the things it said in that paragraph is that the cent it's centered at 4, 2 on their graph. So how do I put it at 4, 2? How do I go right 4? Minus. How do I go up 2? Minus. Okay, now this next part is kind of tricky. It says, so we need to put the radius squared. The radius is one mile, 
But it says at the end of that paragraph that on their map, each square represents 0.1 miles. So if the radius is one mile, but each square is 0.1 miles, then how far is the Ten radius? Squares. 10 squares. So radius is 10, what am I gonna put here? 100. 100. No, I hate it. Uh, it's not yeah. that bad. Yeah, it's like one. Or ten. Let's go, guys. Let's hit the green. Guys, let's hit the green. I was trying to show up. It's like Mrs. Stanley. Okay. Number 17. Write the equation of a circle centered at C, so that's kind of like what we were doing before, that passes through P. Okay, so in other words, what they're doing is they're giving us the center like they were before, but this time they're not telling us the radius, they're telling us a random point P that's on the circle. So how can we find a radius? How can we find the length of the radius? Yeah. It, the radius would be like, what's the di distance between the center point and this point? How do we find distance? Yeah, distance formula. Remember that? Uh, yeah, distance formula. So. The first part's kind of easy because we just use the center like before, 6, negative 4. So if the center's at 6, negative 4, that means right 6 down 4. So how do I move it right 6? Minus 6. How do I move it down 4? Plus 4. Okay, equals the radius squared. Now, the radius is going to be the distance between 6, negative 4, and 0, 0. So I'm going to put 6 minus 0 squared plus negative 4 minus 0 squared. So as for the video, people can't see. So it's x minus x squared plus y minus y squared. Okay, that'll give us the distance of the radius. So x would be 6 and 0. And the y's are negative 4 and 0. Okay, 6 minus 0 is 6. Squared is 36. Negative 4 minus 0 is negative 4. Squared is 16. 36 plus 16 is 52. Do I need to simplify square root of 52? Uh, well, normally I would, but in this case, I'm not going to. Do you guys know why? Because what goes right here? R squared. The radius squared. And if this is the radius, That's then what 52. is the radius squared? 52. So that square root and the square kind of cancel each other out. You just put 52 right here. Got buggy program. Eggs. Eggs taste great. I didn't ask you to do Okay. How do you like your eggs? Boiled. With the skin on. <laughs> the first one is the center, so it's left 11, up 8. So how do I move it left 11? <coughs> how do I move it up 8? Oh no, it went down. Whoops. Uh, then that's going to equal the 
radius squared. You get the radius by finding the distance between the center and the point. So x minus x. By the way, this is where people usually get this wrong. x minus x. So there's a minus and a negative right there. Plus a plus. Like a plus. And then y minus y would be that. So this would actually be negative 11 plus five, 6 is negative 5, squared is 25. 8 minus negative 4 is 12, squared is 144. Um, and they add up to 169. That actually has a square root of 13, but what am I going to put right here? 169. Dude, I can't stop thinking of the... Uh I have the terrible versions. Yep. Um, I'm sure you're going to miss a very exciting conclusion to this lesson. Okay. Ever um, about 23. Sir, I didn't know it. We'll have fun without you then. Oh, yeah. Wait. Oh, what about the one where it's like Albert Einstein versus Stephen Hawking? They get 13, they get 29. That's some big numbers. Yeah. <laughs> That's the best song they've made. That's a 31. Walter White. Okay, so the center's at 5, negative 3. Right 5 means x minus 5. And down 31 plus 31. Plus 31. Okay, equals distance formula. 5 minus negative 13 for the x's, and negative 31 minus negative 29 for the y's. This would be 18 squared. This would be negative 2 squared. If I remember right, this was like 324. Plus four. Okay. If the radius is square to three twenty eight, what am I gonna put right here? Three twenty eight. Mm. Easy, bro. Yeah. It's like you just, just jinxed yourself. It's like the forest. Welcome to your final. Dude, the Walter, um, you had a cup from honey with the crab and gum glass. Every time I get a cup from honey, it's another keg I'm gonna catch. Something, something, my name is Jimmy. That's not. Somebody in the other class said this is an easy one. Well, actually, yes, yes, I do. Yeah, I'm 